I have been training to become a monk for centuries. And now it is finally time to show you what I can do. All right, hey, what's poppin' everyone? So in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the differences and similarities between AWS, AWS Amplify and Google's Firebase. So both of them are showing very promising trends to be kind of like leaders in helping developers create applications. And they're really showing to be the future of web development. So I made a video on AWS Amplify maybe like last month or something like that. So I'll put that on the screen like somewhere up here. So click on it if you want to learn more about Amplify, like specifically. I have not made a video yet on Google's Firebase yet. And I have used it before. I used it like like six months ago or something like that. And it's, it's a really interesting piece of technology. And so make sure to quadruple click that like button for the YouTube algorithm for cool new content trends and technology trends. So let's get to it. So first I'm going to talk about some similarities. So let me explain the very basics for you. So both Amplify and Firebase provide tools that help develop developers kind of build applications like with ease really so that um, you can both allow you to use access to kind of like cloud providers. So Amplify is powered by Amazon's AWS, if you don't know, and the Firebase is also powered by Google's Google Cloud Provider, GCP. So one of the biggest similarities between these, I guess, services is that they provide real-time features so that like, you know, you want to do something in real time, like you want to sh give the user data, like how many cows they have in real time, like you want to update that immediately. So it's very useful because people nowadays, they don't want to wait around more than a second. If you're waiting around for like five seconds, they're going to leave the app and you're going to lose a customer. So people want to see things in real time nowadays. So if let's say someone wants to sign up for an application, you, you don't want to wait a day for the confirmation email. You want to you want to see that confirmation email before you even click that button. They know. They know you're going to click that sign up button. So they're going to like prep the confirmation email sending and stuff like that so that you can sign up for whatever application you want to use. So AWS Amplify uses DynamoDB. It's a NoSQL database. And it also can use AWS AppSync for these real-time features. So AppSync is really cool because it, it provides the ability to scale applications and build applications that will, will scale with ease and also will give real-time updates for mobile and web applications. So another really cool feature about AppSync is that it will give you f access to data offline. So like you can do stuff offline, which is kind of like really difficult to do. Like especially if you want to like do something really important, you want to have it always, even if it's offline. So <laughs> of course offline is very important because what if you are suddenly your um, every the world just starts to flood and uh, the great flood happens and <laughs> there's nothing left but my my little iPad that the, your users want to access to so there's no power like for internet so all you have is your little iPads so you want to access your the app for, <laughs> that you want to create an offline mode and AppSync will allow you to do that. So it can, I'll also make data go to like its right place if power does have, or power comes back on or your internet comes back online. But in the great flood, power won't come back online anyway, so oh well. <laughs> so I've made videos on DynamoDB in the past, which is used by um, Amplify, but it's really cool and the hip NoSQL trend that, and it's also really blazingly fast and there's a lot of options that you can use to make it even faster if you really need that. So Firestore also has access to provide online offline access as well with um, the cloud Firestore. And what Firestore will do, it'll like automatically like send messages to like the, the clients. So it'll be, that's how the real time works with Firebase. It'll just send like it'll come from the server and then go to your web page directly. So another similarity that both of these I guess tools or services, whatever you want to call them, has is that they both provide access to authentication. So like you want to log in, you want to log in with some kind of service provider like Facebook, that's what authentication will allow you to do if you want to like give data specific to a user. So AWS Amplify uses Cognito for their authentication. It's just another service that is used. It's kind of like behind the scenes with Amplify. 
So this allows you to use social media providers like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Amazon. Oh, you know, all the, all the lame social media providers. <laughs> so Firebase also provides authentication. So they do it, allow you to authenticate with Firebase authentication. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a real creative naming on Google's part. They could have named it anything, but they had to name it Firebase authentication. I, I'm going to say that the points go to AWS here. Like Amplify, like sounds cool. You might not know what it means. Like Amplify to me means like you amplify some kind of like electrical signal or something like that. So anyways, Firebase authentication kind of allows all the same social media providers that I mentioned with AWS Amplify, except that it also adds more. So you can kind of think of stuff like Twitter and GitHub, you know, like the lesser known social media providers, even though like everyone uses Twitter nowadays because they got to check on what the president's saying like every second. And I can't finish their similarities without mentioning machine learning because you know machine learning is the hippest thing that every new developer wants to use like oh I got to use machine learning it's the the coolest thing ever and yeah it's pretty cool but I don't know about coolest thing ever well, we'll see we'll see in 10 years so both both Firebase and Amplify provide access to a the ability to use machine learning into your application like um, for example AWS Amplify uses AWS recognition and the machine learning kit is going to be used for Firebase if you want to use those inside your application. So now on to some of the differences. You know, I can't go over like only similarities because there's got to be diff differences unless they're the same provider. They're the same company. Da, da, da. <laughs> so AWS Amplify supports GraphQL, which is a kind of like a framework for backend development. And it's really cool because it allows you to set up a schema for what kind of data you're expecting to send to the backend. And it, it's really like up and coming as well. But unfortunately, Firebase does not support that quite yet. So another downside of Firebase is that, I swear I don't hate Firebase, is that it costs slightly more since Google isn't as big in cloud as Amazon is currently. Like the cloud share for Amazon is like much, it's like 30% while Google's is like probably like five to 10%. So because of that pricing point, if you're having millions of users that have like connections to multiple databases and connect like millions of times each second, yeah, of course, AWS Amplifier might be better suited because it might be cheaper. All right, now to the positives of Firebase. So AWS Amplify tends to be a little bit more difficult to use than Firebase. It'll have a higher learning curve than Firebase because it just takes, AWS Amplify has so many features that it might take some time to learn all of them. And if you're looking for, to get something up and running quick, Firebase might be better suited for you. You can get it all set up in like an hour, a couple hours real quick, and you can have your app deployed in just such a short amount of time. You can do that with Amplify too, but it might take some, some forethought to have it all set up and like make sure you know it all before you do. So because of this, Firebase is better suited to smaller tight-knit teams, but if you're like more corporate or you have large teams, maybe use Amplify instead. All right, I can't do a real comparison though if I don't show you their documentation because how are you gonna learn about this stuff? Well, the best way to learn is starting with the documentation, of course. So let's look at Firebase first. So you have a couple of platforms here that you can use Firebase on. You can do Android, iOS, web, C++, Unity, admin. So let us look at Amplify. So it's, they, they use a uh, kind of platforms as well, but they don't like tell the platform. So I'm going to give points to Firebase there. So JavaScript, Apple, Android, and then this little thing no one uses, Flutter. And honestly, I don't, I don't know what Flutter is. <laughs> I don't know why it's so important for Amplify because Firebase doesn't have Flutter. I'll give points to Firebase there as well. Cause I mean, <laughs> wait, just because Amplify has support for it doesn't mean it's useful, right? I mean, I, maybe maybe Flutter is really useful. I, I just don't know much about it. I'm sorry. So Amplify kind of separates things into their libraries, their CLI, and then their console. So let's see how Firebase separates things. So they have a bunch of products. So they have a lot of products, actually. So they have stuff you can build your app. So that's kind of like the libraries then maybe the provide app quality. So 
this is kind of what I like about like Firebase is they want to like improve your app because if your app does better, then Firebase does better, and because of that, Google will do better and will make more money. And they also want to help grow your business. So they make me feel like they care about me. Like I don't know about you, but Amplify feels very corporate, and it feels like they don't really care. But that's just my opinion. What is XR? Engage your customers in a different dimension with augmented reality and virtual reality within your app. See, that seems pretty cool. I don't, I don't think Firebase has some XR in their stuff or VR. So I guess Firebase has some work to do. It's, it's still in beta. They don't have the, the coolest thing, XR, quite yet. But let's see what else they got. They got pub subs, you know, the subs you can eat. <laughs> Sub sandwiches, GraphQL, like I mentioned, they have REST APIs. And I'm pretty sure Firebase has REST APIs as well. And authentication, like I said, they both have that authentication piece here. They storage that it Amplify has. Let's see, where's the storage? There's Firestore, which is what is used for storage here. Flexible, scalable database for mobile web and serve that server database. So it's kind of like the closest thing that Amplify has is the DynamoDB that I mentioned. And it has all this cool stuff, flexibility and prex expressive querying, whatever that means. <laughs> Real-time updates, which is really the big, big thing here with offline support. And they're both kind of designed to scale. So inclusion, Your Honor, I believe that both of these can be suited well to building out whatever kind of applications that you want to use. And it really depends on like if you're working with other people that use AWS, then of course Amplify might be better. And otherwise, maybe Firebase might be better. And so they're both very good for whatever projects you want to use them in and for whatever applications you want to build. So I wish you the best of luck. And if you do want to use these two services, so I'll talk to you later. Peace.